everyone, it's Kaylee from Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me. Today I am going to be making a soap using those flowers that we piped in Wednesday's video to make something called Blooming Tea. I love Blooming Teas, they are so pretty. If you don't know what a Blooming Tea is, it's generally a little ball of what looks like tea leaves and when you put them into your teapot and they're best in a clear teapot, as the water rehydrates those tea leaves, they open up and they reveal a beautiful flower out of the top of them. So the top of this soap has been inspired by a Blooming Tea Ball. So the fragrance oil I'm going to use today is white tea and ginger. It's got notes of musk, nutmeg, ginger, peony, hyacinth, lemon and bergamot and it has 0% vanillin in it. So I'll be doing a white soap. I'm going to do a drop swirl with two colours and I'm also going to drop swirl in some melt and pour soap and then we'll decorate the top of it. So I'm going to start off as I do with all of my soaps. I'm going to pour my lye water solution down my stick blender into my bucket to avoid any splashback. I'm going to mix it up to a very light trace, possibly even just an emulsion, and then we'll split it out for the colors. So for my colours today I am going to use some titanium dioxide and today I've actually dispersed it into some oil. I'm really sorry, my dog has actually seen something out in the front yard and I really don't know what it is and she is sitting there whining and all sorts. Sometimes it's absolutely nothing that she sees and other times it will be like a little native animal that I can't see because it's so small but she seems to clutch on to the fact that she can see it so if you do hear her crying and talking the other colors that I'm going to use and I'm going to use these to do a drop swirl into the white we've got some marigold mica from my micro obsession so I'll pop that one in there and we are also using the Tangerine Dream from Bath Bomb World to go into our other tub. And they're the two colours that we use to make the flowers in Wednesday's video. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link up in the top corner if you're interested to see the flowers that we're going to be using later. So I'm going to get these mixed up and then I'm going to stir in the fragrance and see if I can see what my dog is trying to get to. So they are all nicely mixed in. We're going to grab our mould here and we are just going to do a very simple drop swirl into our mould. So I'm going to pour a majority of my white in here. So I've got most of that poured out. I'm now going to just do the red and I'm going to make sure we're coming right up into all the corners so I usually go pretty slow on that first pass and then I go quickly on the next sort of pass and that's just to make sure that even those end bars of soap get some of that gorgeous color swirl through them and not just the middle bars So this fragrance smells so delicate and feminine and sometimes the drop swirls can be a little bit harsh. So what I'm going to do is actually put my hanger through this as well and just try and get some really gentle wispy swirls just to match the tone of the fragrance and what we're going to do on the top. So that should be more than enough and I'm going to go and get our embeds ready to go on the top of this soap. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to prep for this soap is a little bit more piping other than the embeds that you may have already seen me make. So I've got some more oil in this bucket here and I'm just going to get, pour my lye in here and we'll make up some soap for piping. 
So what I'm going to do is just pour off a little bit of that for some leaves and then we're going to keep the rest of it to do some little white flowers. That should be more than enough for my leaves there. For the leaf colour I'm going to use some chartreuse mica from my micro obsession. Tea leaves can often be quite a dull sort of green so that's why I'm choosing to use this one that's not so um, bright. And then just in my other pot here I have a little bit of titanium dioxide because I'm going to do some white flowers to complement the rest of the embeds that are going on here. green I have a Wilton 67 or Wilton 67 leaf tip in here so I'm just going to pop that into my trusty little cup and pour the green in and then for my white I'll be using a Wilton 129 to make some little swirly looking daisy type flowers so let's get this one in here all right so we're back to do the top of this soap now and I have a little picture of what I want my soap to look like. I want a little teapot. So if you've been watching me on the Instagram, you would have seen the little teapots. And I want these flowers. So what I'm thinking first of all, before I just start putting the leaves on, on Wednesday's video, we were piping these little flowers. And this is what I was piping them for. So I'm just going to very gently pick them up off the paper. Now some of these will get cut when I cut the soap, but most of them will end up with that sort of whole flower on there. What I'm going to do is once I've got that on there, we're just going to fill it in with some leaves. We might go that way so we get some. So just to give you an idea, and then what I'll do is I'll put all my flowers on and all the other bits as well. So I'm just gonna come in squeezing so I'll just pop a couple on now because I don't want to fill it up too much and the other thing we're popping on top of the soap are these little teapots so each soap will also get their own little teapot which will just sink in there hopefully I will have room to pop the little white flowers on here as well but I think for now what I'll do is pop my teapots and flowers on my soap then we'll put the leaves and we'll go from there so I'm interested to know something I thought I might try and do this year with my videos is take you on a little bit more of my little soaping journey quite often and you know I love seeing how soapers put their soaps together but occasionally they put tops on them I think oh, I'd love to know how they've done that so my kind of thinking for this year where possible if I'm making some of these more intricate style of embeds would you like to see little sneaky bonus videos during the week where I show you some of my soap prepping. So that could be making the oils or um, any other little techniques that I'm using in between to actually get ready to make my weekly soap. If you do, I'll pop a poll up in the top corner and you can let me know if you would like to see more of those sort of little extra videos um, making them or if no, you're just quite happy to see me making the actual bars of the soap and leaving it as a surprise with my little teapots I posted them onto Instagram and asked people what they thought I was going to make and I th some of the ideas on there were amazing um, one of the things I did think of while I was painting them was to do a beauty and a beast inspired um, soap because I don't really do themed soaps like that I just I work with a fragrance and I build the soap around the fragrance and someone else said an Alice in Wonderland and as soon as I read it the ideas that went through my head of what you could possibly do to go on the top of the soap was absolutely astronomical I don't know how I'd be able to accomplish half of what I thought of to put on the top of this soap but you know that could be a a work in progress one but yeah, if you follow along on Instagram, you do get to see some of the behind the scenes of what I do to make each soap. But yeah, let me know. Would you like to see a bonus weekly video? There is another bonus one coming up this week to show what I do in next week's um, soap. So if you do 
if you are interested in seeing that don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell if you haven't already and that will tell you when that next little bonus video is coming out so this video is actually going to be scheduled to come out on the 12th of January and then my husband and I are going on holiday that week I am so looking forward to it. It's been a couple of years since we've been on holiday. We are heading over to Perth for about 10 days and we're going to go and see my very good friend and her family. I get to meet her new daughter as well. Well, she's almost, well, yeah, she's a couple of years old now. So I'm very much looking forward to meeting her and also getting to see her gorgeous, crazy son again. And just looking forward to having a really nice time over there with her. Last time we were over, she was pregnant. So we couldn't do very much in terms of going out on the town. But we still had a really nice time catching up. So I'm hopefully this time we get to have a couple of drinks together. She is another gin lover. So I will be away for 10 days. I'll have very limited access to the internet to my emails and things like that um, but when I do get the access I'll certainly come on and I'll answer any questions and things that you may have about the soaps and I do have some videos all lined up for while we're away so next week I do have that sort of little bonus sneaky peek of um, how I create the soap but then the next three videos after that are actually a custom order soaps they're three different soaps all for the same person so because I filmed them back in October before I had this idea of doing the little midweek videos I'm afraid there's no little sneaky ones in between but I will if it's something that you want to see I will certainly get back to doing the little sneaky ones once we get back off holiday Right, so now I've got all my little teapots in. I'm going to finish popping my leaves onto here. Hopefully this hasn't set up too much. I know, there it goes. Just have to get my... If you do find that your piping has set up too much in your bag, just give it a bit of a wiggle round just to get it moving and fluid again. Also, when I do piping like this, I tend not to put fragrance into it just so that you don't have the fragrance interfering with the soap setting up so I'm going to get all my little well they're meant to be tea leaves but yes open to artistic interpretation on this one again but you kind of get that sort of gist as you make one of these blooming teas and the tea leaves open up and reveal that really pretty flower on the inside What I'm going to do now is just grab that white piping. Hopefully it's still nice and fluid and usable. And all I'm going to do is just find little spots where I can. I'm going to hold my bag straight up and down. And I know this is going to be really hard for you guys to see from this camera angle. But I'm going to hold it up and up. And I'm going to give it a good squeeze. And as I finish, I'm just going to twist and pull up. And I will end up with some little flowers. I think that is actually too solid to it's not fluid enough to actually pop into the tops of those. So what we might quickly do is grab some of that Wellington Mica. I will grab a little container and we'll pop some of that Wellington Mica in. I am then going to grab just a small amount of olive oil to mix into it. I want it to be quite thick so it will stick and I'm going to grab my toothpick just give it a bit of a, a mix up there 
what I'm going to do is just grab myself a little pipette and then in the tops of each of these flowers I'm just going to put a small amount of this mica just to give it a little bit of colour. are going to do because this is such a feminine soap I have to add just a sprinkle of glitter onto this one and we have got rainbow dreams it is really really pretty and it's really going to bring out all those leaves and flowers and I think we are done for our blooming tea soap so I'll bring you down so you can have a closer look here is blooming tea up close and you can see how that glitter has just caught and made all the leaves and the flowers really come to life. I will get some rubbing alcohol to clean those little teapots up with once the soap has set so we're not moving them around too much. I never have too much success with painting with mica and alcohol. I always seem to get it smeared and stained. I don't know how the others are doing it. If you care to share, let me know down below, please. I don't like soap paint. I don't like the ingredients that go into it. So I really need to learn how to master doing the alcohol and mica. But what I'm going to do is leave this soap to set overnight. And then I'm going to come back tomorrow and cut it up. We are back to cut blooming tea and it is smelling so pretty, soft and delicate. Real feminine fragrance this one is. It's really hard to capture on the camera but the way the flowers have dried you can actually see that there are two tones of colour through them. It's not an obvious swirl but by having those two tones of colour it gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. Now I realised after I made this soap and I cleaned up, I went inside the house and I was just doing a li little bit of work, I realised in the microwave is still sitting my jug of melt and pour, which I was going to do as a drop swirl through the soap. So I will have to save that melt and pour for another project, um, but this one should still be really pretty without it. I've got this lined up. I'm trying to miss the teapots. I know I'm going to cut into some of these flowers, but the soaps will have a majority of those flowers on them. Now this little teapot is in the way and it's too late, so I'm just going to kind of push it up just a little bit to get the wire around it. That's it, so we don't cut the teapot there. And we go straight down. Oops, some of my leaves have come off just a few that were hanging off the edge there. Alright, so we'll see what we've got on the inside here. And we have a really pretty delicate swirl just to match in with the fragrance and the top. So each of them will have their little teapot, the main flower, and then just a couple of those little white flowers as well. So I am really pleased with how this one has come up. The swirl just matches in with that fragrance so perfectly. There is a little bit of glycerin river through where the swirls are, but not in the main base of the soap. Just seems to be where those colors have been swirled through each other. But that kind of really adds to it. And if I'd poured the melt and pour into this as I had intended, you still would have got those sort of translucent sort of areas. So I think those really add to the design of this soap again. So just grab this next one here. Sounds like we've got a plane going over the top of us here. Just one of the little seaplanes. That one is a really pretty swirl on there. And then the other side is just nice and delicate. I love how the, the different sides of soaps just can really add. So that's quite a thick, heavy swirl. Whereas flip it over and we've got a nice, pretty, dainty swirl. So I will get these teapots cleaned up a little bit more for, to get those... Uh, mica stains off them where I can and then they will get stamped and tidied up before heading off to the curing rack for the next four weeks. So this one should come out in that sort of mid-February sort of time. So I hope you have enjoyed watching how I make my blooming tea soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and if you hit the little bell sign, it will let you know the next time I bring out a video for you. 
So until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.